The ruling of Progressive Congress, APC, has dismissed fears that the nomination of Senator Bola Ahmed Tinubu as a presidential candidate of the party may be in jeopardy following a judgment of the Federal High Court that nullified the nomination of Oshun State Governor Adiwe Gawetola and his deputy, Benedict Alabi, as candidates of the party in the July governorship election. Justice Emeka Mwite had on Friday in Abuja held that the nomination of Oyetola and his deputy were unlawful and unconstitutional because Governor Mima Labuni, who submitted their names to the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, violated the provisions of Section 183 of the Constitution, and Section 82, Subsection 3 of the Electoral Act 2022. The suit marked FHC slash ABJ CS slash 468 slash 2 2022 has Boone, former acting chairman of the APC and four others, as defendants. Boone organized a party's convention where Senator Abdullahi Adamu emerged as the party's national chairman. Adamu subsequently conducted the APC presidential primary, which produced Tinubu as a party's candidate for the 2023 election. This has generated anxiety in some quarters, that since something cannot be built on nothing, the emergence of Tinumbu from an exercise initiated by Bune could also be declared a nullity by the court. However, media checks revealed that the Federal High Court, sitting in Port Harcourt, River State, had earlier affirmed the Bune-led Caretaker Extraordinary Convention Planning Committee of the APC when he struck out his suit challenging the competence of the committee. Joining us now from our Abuja studio to review the recent court ruling and other matters arising is Liboros Ushoma, a lawyer and a human rights activist. Liboros, good morning. Yeah, good morning, doctor, and um, good morning to Rufai. Good morning, sir. Okay, there are many strands to this uh, ruling from the Court of uh, Justice uh, with Federal High Court in Abuja, taking us back to the Akre Dolu. Uh, uh, Jagede case, uh, you know, yeah, exactly. Case, taking us many decades back uh, to the uh, ruling uh, made by uh, Lord Denny in Mark Foy versus uh, UAC, you know, about how nothing can stand on nothing. You can't put something on nothing and, and nothing expect it to stand. stand. Yes. So please help us look at all these strands, you know, the implications and who the beneficiaries are, because it will appear that there are some beneficiaries. Ademola Adeleke of the PDP in Osho State will certainly be a major beneficiary, I think. <laughs> yes, um, thank you, uh, Dr. Ruben. If you remember, sometimes in July 2021, Festus Keamu did write, um, he wrote a memo on the legal application. That was immediately after the Supreme Court judgment on Akere Dulu's case where you had a split judgment of four against three. And um, Fessos Kiamu looked at the legal issue and the legal quagmire and did raise an alarm. He also was supported by um, Senator Baba Femi Ojodu and Itai Nang in that position, even though the Attorney General and some other persons disagreed. Uh, but uh, unfortunately today, the court of um, justice, uh, Mecca and Witte, has proved uh, justice, uh, Professor Skiamu SCN right in, in his ruling on this matter. Simple, justice, uh, Professor Skiamu's position then was that by virtue of section 183 of the Constitution, the, an executive governor, the, that section forbids an executive governor from holding another executive position or collecting, you know, holding a position that will enable him to collect sal salary. These interpretations, you know, doctor, are disjointed, disjointively, and or. So in this case, what the court is saying, permit me to quickly read the provisions of um, Section 83 for the benefit of our, our, our listeners. Section 83 of um, the Constitution simply says that the governor shall not, during the period when he holds office, hold any other executive office or paid employment in any capacity whatsoever. The argument of um, the Attorney General then was that the um, position of um, Boni was an ad hoc position and that he wasn't paid for the job. But the argument of uh, Keamu and uh, Baba Femi Ojodu was the fact that 
there is no, no decision taken by a national chairman of a party that Boni hadn't taken. So the fact that is um, uh, described as a caretaker committee to organize an extraordinary committee does not mean that he's not taking executive position. In fact, a lot of the ordinary man would see him as an executive, acting executive chairman of the party. And Kiamu did advise that what the party could do was to call them um, uh, the uh, National Executive Council of the party to reconstitute that uh, extraordinary uh, uh, caretaker committee and then remove anybody who is holding an executive position, governors. You know, but the party, you know, disregarded that position. Even there was a suit also that challenged the candidature, earlier challenged the candidature of uh, Oyetola on the ground that is a member of that committee. Budo, that suit also was uh, dismissed by the Federal High Court. But today, we are seeing a, dif a different Federal High Court saying that there's a violation of Section 183. And what that means is that every decision, like you had said, Every decision taken, if this judgment is sustained, it means that every decision taken by that committee, including the Congresses and the convention organized by the committee, amounts to a nullity. That is going to put APC in a quagmire uh, uh, situation. So, but we we'll wait to see, because the matter definitely, matters of this nature will definitely end at the Supreme Court. We we'll wait to see how um, the Supreme Court will look at it. But some persons also have argued that um, considering the fact that the uh, um, primaries that produced the APC presidential flag bearer was conducted by Adamu, and that the matter, you know, being um, statute bad at this stage can no longer be questioned. But you, we should also remember that the, the issue was raised in a post-election matter in Akere Dolu's case. The judgment of the Supreme Court was that the Boni was not a party in that matter. So now there is a clear reading to that section. So if the other party, let's say PDP or Labour Party, decides to raise that issue after the election and if the Supreme Court sustains that position, then it might be a bring, it pose a big challenge for the APC. Let's, let's talk about the severity of this challenge, you know, for the APC. Because with what you are saying now, is that there are going to be far-reaching implications. Even with the Akiri Dolu case, a lot of people were not so happy about the judgment and they said he just scaled based on technicality. So let's expand this conversation and even yeah. know, let's look at this far-reaching consequences because it's also going to hit a kitty state. So are you saying that somebody like the SDP candidate in yeah. the former yeah. elections in a kitty state cannot go to court and use this as a bait to challenge the, the governor that's about to be sworn in a kitty state Let's look at the far-reaching effect of all of this. If, if it wasn't for the Akiti case, if that issue, mind you, election petitions are no longer amended. Amendment of uh, petitions are, are no longer allowed by the provisions of um, the Electoral Act. So if it wasn't already an issue in the election petition filed by the candidate of the SDP, in a kitty state, then that is a foregone and concluded issue. He can no longer amend his uh, a petition to include that prayer. And um, if he didn't file any petition, I am sorry it is too late in the day for him to rush to a tribunal to be filing a petition now. But like I have, I, I have said, the far-reaching implications are grave if this position is sustained. I, I completely, I keep quoting Baba Femi Ojodu, I completely agree with the positions of Baba Femi Ojodu, then Senator, a former Senator of the Federal Republic, that even though, as I'd, I immediately after the judgment, Akuro Dolu dismissed the judgment, even the, um, the APC lawyer then dismissed the judgment that a the dissenting judgment of a Supreme Court cannot form the basis of a decision. But the warning of Fessos Keamu was not that the dissenting judgment was the position of the law, was that it, is, it might be the position of the law in subsequent matters, even though no two cases are the same. And that is what has played out in the case of Oyetola today now. That, remember, Boni also, Boni also submitted the name of uh, the candidate of uh, the Akiti State uh, APC candidate to INEC. And he organized the uh, convention that produced Adamu. So if the court 
sustain that position that Buni, by all intent and purpose, and by the provisions of Section 183 of the Constitution, does not have the power to hold that position, being the, on the ground that he's an executive governor, he can no longer hold an executive uh, position in another organization, whether paid or unpaid, then it means that every action taken by Boni as the caretaker committee chair of the com of uh, APC external committee, it's a nullity, amounts to a nullity. Every decision taken by him amounts to a nullity, including the Congress and convention that produce the current executive members of the APC. That would be, you know, the, I, I would wonder where the APC would be because all their candidates, all the candidates that, uh, that emerge through Congresses and these Congresses uh, uh, produced um, leaders at the state level that subsequently produced candidates for election, including the national candidate. What it means is that all of that will amount to a nullity, which was the warning that Professor Skiamu was um, drawing the, uh, the attention uh, uh, that uh, Professor Skiamu was drawing the party to at that time. But they allow politics to prevail. And uh, today, we have had the first judgment now. Let's see what the Court of Appeal will say in that regard. And then subsequently, the, Sup the Supreme Court. But I also will not um, close my eyes to the fact that the Federal High Court in Rivers had ruled otherwise earlier on. But this is the latter judgment in time. So what you have um, a two conflicting judgment of court of coordinate jurisdiction. We we'll wait for the court of appeal to see how the court of appeal will take a bite on this current matter. It's 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 a bit, a bit frightening for me. It's a very living, uh, you know, subject, and the true test is in its implementation. The Supreme Court in the uh, Akredolu uh, Jagede matter uh, may have taken the position that it took because Buni was not joined in the suit. I think that was the ruling. And then you refer to the uh, you know, minority judgment by uh, uh, Justice uh, uh, Mary Odili, JSC, as she then uh, was. But the Supreme Court now has an opportunity. It may not reverse itself in a particular case, but if this matter goes all the way to the Supreme Court, the Supreme Court has you know, the opportunity uh, to reverse itself uh, in the precedence that was established uh, previously. What do you think is likely to happen? What, what the Supreme Court simply said in that matter was, Buni was not joined. The Supreme Court did not make a pronouncement on, on the majority decision didn't make a pronouncement on those issues raised. So there is no position. But what the Supreme Court simply said was that, since Buni was not a party in the matter, he could not go into that issue. And for me, it was a signal to the point that this can, this can be an issue. The fact that what amounts, the first thing is, what amounts to an executive position, because Section 183 is talking about executive position, taking executive decision. Or you are holding a position whereby you are collecting salary. That's of a minister. So what the Supreme Court will be looking at is what amounts to executive position. The position, even though the party had argued that the position of uh, Boni was that of um, um, an extraordinary, an ad hoc based uh, position, an extraordinary caretaker committee chair to organize a, a Congress. But we also know that the position of Boni then was beyond just organizing a Congress. That's what Justice Nwite is also querying. The position of Boni then also amounted to an executive position by submitting the names of candidates to INEC for an election, which was what the PDP queried in the case of uh, Ondo. That is an executive position. That is a position that is exercised by the uh, party national chairman. Um, INEC Potter, we all know, it's a notorious fact that INEC Potter, the code to INEC Potter to submission of name is only accessible to the chairman of a party and the secretary of that party. So by submitting those names, um, you can say that Boni was exercising an executive power. And then also, uh, Article 7.4 of the uh, APC Constitution, Constitution also forbids um, a, 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 a governor holding an executive position in, in the um, um, uh, National Working Committee of the party. So all of these are the issues that would you know, come up at the end of the day. I doubt, uh, these are my opinion, I doubt if the Supreme Court, because it has not even, 
we can't say it will overrule itself because he didn't even take a bite on the matter. I just said this person was not joined as a party. The argument, the argument of some of the lawyers for the party also is the fact that you cannot join Buni in a matter that is a post-election matter. But that also is an argument that the court will need to look at, that APC being a party in the matter already and Buni not being a candidate in the election cannot be joined as a party in a matter. That's another technical ground that also might, might need to be looked at. But if there are issues that borders on his action as a chairman or as a, 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 somebody holding an executive position, whether the nomenclature describes him as um, executive position or a caretaker committee, uh, or, or a, a, a committee to organize an extraordinary, uh, extraordinary congress, it, these are nomenclature. So it is the way the courts would describe what actually the position that he holds or the conduct of that position that will matter at the end of the day. That's why a lot of people are still um, you know, skeptical that this might signal danger. But I just wonder how they would, I pray, I, I, like you had said, how they would play it out. But I do not see uh, the Supreme Court, uh, if this matter is properly argued, I do not see the Supreme Court looking the other way. Because you can't close your eyes to the fact of the, the action taken by the, the person, no matter how described, uh, how the position is described, whether it is described as an executive position. Because the court look at, not just, do not just look at the, the, it looks at the intent and not just the form of, of what was described. You can appoint somebody as a, a caretaker committee to organize a committee or a, a congress, but if that person goes beyond performing executive function and you did not query those executive functions and those executive functions are latent like we have seen then that's another problem also in the in the course of interpreting the role that he has actually played <clears throat> well but what is tantamount to executive functions were performed like you just stated there so why are we saying okay they might not be able to define it properly and say okay he was a caretaker person but he signed forms in the first regard and we cannot remove that fact from this conversation. Yes, that, that's what I'm saying. That's where, because the argument of the party at that time, including the argument of the attorney general, was that the uh, Boni was not, um, that means if you go by the letters of uh, Section 183, forgetting the spirit of Section 183, that uh, go members of uh, governors who are members of Governors Forum were violating Section 183. And the interpretation is that the position of a, a, a governor who is a member of Governor's Forum does not extend beyond his state. A member who is a governor's who is a, a governor is a member of a governor's forum cannot go to take decisions on who become a candidate of a party in another state. But we also know that there were parallel congresses in APC uh, at the time Boni was uh, the head of the Ketika Committee, and any committee recognized by Boni was the authentic committee. He signed form for candidate. He submitted the names of candidates. These are positions, these are decisions taken solely by chairman of, of uh, political parties. So all of this, I, that's what I'm saying is that I want to see how all of these arguments we go back and forth. But I also raise the fact that the issue, the sole issue, another issue that would, another technical issue would be whether you can join him as a party in a matter that is a post-election matter. Because the Supreme Court had argued that, had ruled in uh, Akredolu's case, that he wasn't a party, and so they couldn't look into the matter. He needed to come defend whether the action he's taking are executive uh, action or action spelled out by the uh, um, uh, letter or the uh, authority that appointed him as executive committee, as uh, a caretaker committee to organize. Uh, what do you call it, uh, a, 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 an extraordinary congress. So these, these are, that's what I'm saying. It depends on the way you want to look at it. But to the ordinary man, Buni was simply an uh, acting executive chairman of the party, irrespective of the nomenclature that you, you want to give to him, because he played the role of the acting chairman of the party in the absence of uh, the national chairman when they had their crisis that saw the uh, exit of, of Oshomole. So... We're coming back to Justice Witte now. Justice Witte had ruled that those actions amounted to, or amount to a contravention of Section 183 and amount to a nullity. So, ab initial, what it means is that 
by, by the provisions of the law of the Constitution today, Buni never existed. And any action taken by somebody that never existed amounts to a nullity because it is illegal. So, and uh, 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 Dr. Ruben had said, um, USC and McFoy logged in and said you can't put something on nothing and expect it to stand. Can you say the action of Buni amounted to an illegality and now also now upheld the Congress or the convention conducted by Buni to stand, to say yes, even though the, it's, it's an illegal act, but this convention that he conducted produced this candidate, and so the convention is in order. These are uh, you know, questions that um, the court will also answer. But for the layman, it, you would say, oh, plus, plus one minus one. It is um, as simple as saying, look, everything amounts to a nullity. But even the other political parties will be interested in this, and I know that at the end of the day, even after the uh, election, a lot of them also want to make this an issue. Okay, I mean, more questions. In the uh, Supreme Court decision, in the Akira Dulu case, some people have raised the question, would the outcome have been different if Femi Malabune was joined in the suit, you know, and the Supreme Court had to take uh, a decision? But beyond that, the APC convention, I thought the APC convention ratified itself uh, before it went ahead. Does that count for anything? And then third, I asked you about uh, uh, who is benefiting from the ruling of uh, justice uh, in which is uh, court? Uh, because if it is said that Oyetola was not a candidate validly, uh, you know, uh, uh, chosen uh, in that election, uh, then does that, does that not translate into an advantage uh, clearly for the PDP? And would that not just set to the matter in that regard? Yeah, um, let me take the last question first. Uh, we all know that um, if um, the, the court, if that uh, judgment is sustained by the, sustained by the Supreme Court, uh, as it stands today, what it means is that the APC had no candidate in that uh, Oshun State election. That's what the court is simply saying. Just like it, we saw it play out in Rivers and Zamfara, that the APC had no candidate because the man who submitted the, the list of the APC had no powers to so do. So the beneficiary is the candidate of the PDP that had won the election. So what it means that even the matter at the election petition tribunal, if this, this position is sustained by the Supreme Court, whatever decision that the election petition tribunal would, would arrive at today is that there is no candidate for the APC. And so the beneficiary will be the PDP, PDP candidate. That's, that's, on, that's one side. Then um, secondly, the second question was... Um, whether the uh, ratification by the APC. The question is not whether the party has power to ratify decisions taken by Boni. The issue here is, can a, an executive governor of a state hold another executive position? That is it. No matter how, you, how much ratification you ratify the, an illegal decision, it cannot amount to a legal decision. That's what the court is basically saying, that the man who took those decisions in, in the first place has no power to take the decision. It's, it, it, the presumption is that the office, he never occupied that office. So what are you rectifying? What are you rectifying? That's, that's one argument also. Because you can't, like we, we say, you can't put something on nothing and now say, I want to rectify that thing that you placed on nothing, it won't stand. So no matter the ratification that you want to do, what the court is saying is ab initio, by virtue of section 183, that the Buni does not have power to occupy that position and he does not have power to take any decision. Any decision that he has taken amounts to a knowledge. Otherwise, the ratification would also have played in favor of, this, of uh, the APC in this judgment because the court would have held that having his decision having been ratified by the committee that he subsequently organized by the, uh, uh, um, uh, the ESCO that was produced by the committee, by his committee, by the convention that he organized, that decisions having been ratified, it cures any defect. The issue here is not 
the, the decision taken, the legality or otherwise of the decision taken. The issue is, there's a thin line between the two. The issue here is the, the legality of him occupying the office in the first place. So that is the foundation of all other issues. So if it is illegal, that means any decision taken by him amounts to a nullity. And that's what the uh, Justice Witte has said here. So, um, then your qu first question now, I can't remember the first question again. No, I was asking uh, whether, this, whether you, the outcome will have been different in the Akire Dolu case if uh, Buni had okay, been yes. joined in the suit. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah I remember now. That's what uh, Professor Skiamu was arguing, that the party should not wait to determine whether the outcome will be different or not. Because I think the body language of the court then would have been, but by virtue of the minority decision, that if Akere Dolu had been joined, uh, sorry, if Buni had been joined in the matter, maybe narrowly, PDP would have just taken over uh, Ondo State using the court, uh, instrumentality of the court. And that was the argument of Fessos Keamu then, that now there was a technical point. The court said, the party was not joined, so he had no opportunity to defend himself. It is also a notorious fact that those decisions that he took were executive decisions. That one is also not in doubt. But the court did not you know, make a, a definite pronouncement on that, despite the minority decision. So I, am of, I think, in line with what Festus Skiamu SN had argued, that the party should be careful. And if I believe truly that if... Boni had been joining that matter, the judgment would, would have definitely be go, gone the other way. And it would have posed a great da danger for, for, for the party. They would have, anyway, probably they would have amended, you know, and sat down to, you know, quickly do a rethink and reorganize the position. But I think the Supreme Court also didn't do them any favor by just closing its eyes to that issue. But the party, like they say, he who the gods wants to kill, they first make mad. The party also kept silent in the face of all of this, in the face of the minority judgment, that we should have advised the party to quickly make amends and reorganize uh, the, the, um, uh, the committee, removing the governors who were members of that committee. Or like Pesos also you know, um, uh, pointed out or advised, also now probably asking the uh, board of trustees of the party to conduct a Congress and convention, national convention at that time, that will forthwith um, for run the affairs of the party. But they also didn't do that because as at that time, a lot of them closed their eyes to the position of the law and where it was easy for might to rule because you had a lot of parallel congresses. So those who were favorites of uh, the parallel congresses recognized by Buni, felt, oh yes, Buni's action are in order. The Kivu Keamu was accused of being one of those that advised the, the, the president, you know, uh, in that direction. But the argument is that he advised the president before the Supreme Court decision. The Supreme Court decision haven't, you know, peeped into those issues. It was convenient for him to say, well, I gave that advice before this judgment. Now that this judgment has stated likely, what the likely position of the law would be, it would be better for the court to look for the party to have a rethink, retrace his step, and do this, you know, legally. But unfortunately, uh, that's not it. We're already mid midstream. We're already mid in the middle of the sea. We can we can only, you know, fold our hands and watch how you know they progress further from here. Let so, the fireworks begin. So let the fireworks begin. So definitely, what you're saying is that other parties have smelled blood. Will they go for the jugglers of the APC now? Definitely. Definitely. You see now, this, this, um, when the judgment was given, delivered on Friday, a, a lot of, um, I know a lot of political parties, the, the PDP and the Labour Party would have cons constituted a legal team to study that judgment and uh, also see how they can use it to their advantage. Some members of uh, the Labour Party also feel that it is divine, that the judgment is a divine intervention by God, considering the ground swell of uh, support that the Labour Party candidate is getting, and the fear that the big party might rig the election, and that also the fear that the ruling APC might want to be an obstacle. So a lot of them are already seeing this judgment as, you know, God's intervention of removing the potential, 
you know, threat to obese emergence. So they probably would have consulted a legal team now to begin to look at those areas and how they will intend to use such judgment to their advantage. Okay, um, Liboros, uh, let me try to smuggle something in uh, since our last uh, conversation, which is the situation in Yobe North and INEC publishing the list of candidates for the 2023 election. Now, Mashina, uh, Bashi Mashina of the APC went to court saying he was not a placeholder for uh, Lawan, the Senate president. And the court of uh, justice, uh, Fadimatu Amenu, uh, ruled in his favor. But now, the APC in Yobe North uh, says that they are going to court. Uh, they disagree. Now, can you just help us uh, comment on this uh, plight of the placeholder? And this particular placeholder, uh, as alleged, that uh, proved difficult and said that he too is good enough to go to the Senate. After all, Ahmad Lawan has been there for, uh, he's been in the National Assembly for almost 23 years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you see, um, the placeholder, the place of placeholder is alien to our, our electoral laws and our constitution. But what the, because candidates are allowed to resign their nomination. And so a lot of them now see, they use, it, I think the word placeholder is a media creation, really. Uh, because it is, um, it is not, it is alien to our electoral act. So most times, like you saw play, what played out in, um, um, I think, Ebony State also, where the governor's brother, you know, was the one who went to contest um, the seats the senatorial seat, and at the end of the day, you know, will step down, will withdraw his candidature for his uh, brother. Also, we've seen that play out in 1999, uh, 20, 2019. Um, even in 2015, if you remember, Senator um, uh, what, Okokorocha contested the primaries in um, APC then, and then he's um, lucky you know, was a placeholder for him, contested the, the governorship seat, and then eventually withdrew. Uh, uh, Tambua, Governor Tambua of uh, the Sokoto State, contested the presidential ticket of PDP. You know, somebody was a placeholder for him. I think that was where the media created that word placeholder, because you are allowed to withdraw. But in the event that the candidate refused to withdraw, there is nothing anybody can do about it. And that's what played out in the case of Machina. Machina, because I think Ahmed Lawa also had, you know, he believed solely that he was going to be the candidate of the flag bearer of the APC. Considering the, the, the fact that, you know, at the end of um, just a few days to the primaries, there were this, you know, talk, uh, uh, breaking news in the media that he was an endorsement of the villa and um, uh, the party national, the, the, uh, the party nation, national chairman, the newly elected party national chairman, also, you know, said that um, Mohamed Lawa was um, the candidate of the president and the rest. And so, you know, the man already had believed. I think the, probably that's why he didn't discuss with Machina, so that um, there will be an arrangement where Machina would, you know, honorably withdraw his candidature for him. But unfortunately, even the court of appeal has ruled today that the uh, candidature, affirming the candidature of Machina. And um, the, uh, what do you call it, uh, the Senate President Ahmed Lawa has also accepted that judgment in good faith. Because even if he gets to Supreme Court, I do not see how it's going to be different. Uh, the two courts having heard can concurrently that position. But all of this, all of this issue, this issue that we are discussing now on the role of um, Buni, May Malabuni as uh, the acting uh, caretaker committee chair of the party. All of this will come to a nullity if the Supreme Court sustained the judgment of Justice Emeka Onwite that May Malabuni, his actions were illegal and that by virtue of Section 183, he ought not to have even occupied that position. So those going to court now, the Court of Appeal haven't affirmed the decision. Even those going to court now, for me, I think uh, they are just um, going to waste the time of the court by going to court to question that um, the candidature of, uh, um, what do you call it, uh, Machina. But it is a similar case in that of um, Akpabio, in Akpabio's case. But we're seeing the legal quagmire playing out in that of in Akpabio's case, where you have two matters in court, one by Akpabio, one by uh, the DIG, who is um, the uh, 
uh, um, who is allegedly the duly elected candidate. But INEC has recognized Akpabio now. The court haven't asked INEC to list Akpabio's name as a candidate. But we also would watch to see how that also played out because the facts are similar. There had been consistent issue that um, the candidate, the DIG is saying is not a placeholder. And the former resident electoral commissioner of Akwaibon had said that the uh, party primaries that produce Akpabio was not monitored by INEC. And so they only recognized one party primaries, the one that produced the okay. DIG. So every other subsequent party primaries that INEC had said they were not aware of it. Okay, uh, in that spirit, let's just make an extension to Agomez's case too and, and, and see the legalese behind it. I didn't get that. Agomez and um, the governor of Ebony State. Yes, um, the governor of Ebony State's case now has been affirmed by the Court of Appeal. You know, uh, before, before um, that's the senatorial ticket of, yes. um, of um, uh, the, the, the governor of Ebony State. You know, the governor of Ebony State had argued that the, there was a primary that produced his brother as the valid candidate of the party. And that the, um, the applicant also contested that the validity of that primaries. And on that ground, that the uh, primaries was nullified and another primaries ordered by the party. Just like that of, um, uh, what do you call it, uh, Akwaibom, the, the position of INEC was that the primaries, the other primaries that produced the governor of Ebony State was, you know, somehow questionable. But the Court of Appeal has heard otherwise now, affirming the candidature of, um, of the governor of Ebony State. So his own case is settled. Unlike Akpabio's case, in Akpabio's case, even the primaries that the party is denying that produced the DIG, the, that primaries had been affirmed by a federal high court in Port Harcourt. Uh, the, some of the candidates that emerged from that primary, the federal high court in Port Harcourt has, you know, affirmed that primaries and their nomination. This is one of the reasons why the federal high court uh, chief judge, in its wisdom, did state that all pre-election matters should be instituted in Abuja, and also deposed to an affidavit to the fact that you, there is no multiplicity of action you know, on the same uh, subject matter, on the, uh, 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 about the same party in another court. But we also have seen how politicians have abused this position consistently and find multiplicity of suits, and in some cases, go to uh, their jurisdiction to file some of these cases. But that of um, uh, the APC had been, the uh, Ebony case had been, I think had been laid to rest by the Court of Appeal. I, and we'll wait to see if it will be further challenged to the Supreme Court. Well, so Lebo INEC now had recognized the candidature of the governor of Ebony State. Okay, Libora Soshoma, on this note, we'll take a short break. And then when we return from that break, the program will continue. Please stay with us. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the morning show. Yeah, on the Arise News Channel, still with us is Libora Sushoma, a lawyer and a human rights activist. And we've been talking about the ruling uh, by uh, the Court of Justice here in Witte uh, in the matter of the Oshun uh, gubernatorial election. And whether indeed the uh, governor and his uh, running mate in that uh, last gubernatorial election were validly uh, nominated and elected. Uh, you know, uh, to run in that election. Their papers haven't been signed by May Mala uh, Boni. But quickly, I mean, I think we've dealt extensively with that. I just have one more question for you, uh, Libora Soshoma. And uh, it has to do with INEC, still about elections. Recently, we had the CUPP raising objections about the voters' uh, register and about strange names showing up in the register. But INEC has uh, since told us that they have in place the beavers. They also have in place another technological, uh, you know, structure called uh, ABIS. And that with these two combined, uh, people do not have to raise any anxieties. And that what INEC will do is just to clean up uh, that register. Do you think we should trust INEC? Um, yes and no. Um, I, I know of a fact that INEC has um, BVAS and they also have uh, AVIS which is an automated fingerprint identification system to clean up any register 
immediately after registration. But no, to the sense that um, I had seen INEC play double standard in some of the matters that I mentioned in court. And I uh, begin to wonder where INEC's uh, loyalty lies in some of those cases. Like uh, the case of Akwabio, you have two matters in court, one in court six, Federal High Court in Abuja, the other one in court seven, same Federal High Court in Abuja. Why INEC is appearing, you know, in one, the other one, INEC had not appeared despite consistently being served with hearing notice and they have filed nothing. You know, so you now begin to wonder, this, this one court, uh, the, the two courts are, you know, on the same, just close to each other. One court seven, the other one court six. In the one in court six, that is the one Akbabio filed. INEC participated in that one. Even the day judgment was delivered, INEC was there and they were quick to obey the judgment. The other one filed by the DIG, INEC had refused to appear in that matter. So, and also in similar matters like that. So on that, the attitude of some members of INEC will call to question. But on the case of, um, you know, after registration on the issue of, by the CUPP, after registration, uh, because INEC also now has a technology that enables you view, you know, names of registrant, uh, re uh, uh, registered voters on their portal. And then sometimes they display names for claims and objectives. You remember in, in 19, was it 2007, we had um, um, names, fictitious names in INEC register. When Jega came in 2010, he said that what we have was not even worthy of calling a registrant. So he was going to do a total, he can't clean up. He was going to do a different one altogether and subsequently introduced um, the, card, uh, uh, the direct data capturing machine. And then now you have Beavers. And what they did at that point was immediately after registration, you cannot rule out the fact that politicians will always, you know, engage people to do multiple registrations, fictitious names. There were even allegations that some persons use palm canners in some areas to turn print. You know, if you remember in, um, I think, um, it was it Oshun election during Arigbe Show last time, the party had to bring in consultants, you know, to analyze the, 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 the fingerprint of uh, the voters. You know, so in that regard, INEC introduced what they call the AVIS, Automated Fingerprint Identification System, to filter out names that they cannot match with biometrics, and then also to also filter out names that are multiple, filter out multiple registration. So if INEC says, yes, they have machineries or they have technology to eliminate all of this multiple voting, and then to now add to that, they now have what you call beavers, where on the day of election, it is people who can be verified with permanent voters card, whose permanent voters card also match with the INEC uh, beavers, that will be allowed to vote. So the era of multiple thumb printing and um, stuffing of ballot box for now, for me, I think it's um, a, a bygone issue. And then also conclusively, elections are transmitted right from the polling unit to, you know, um, uh, their, their server or their, their, their whatever they want to call it. And people who are registered with INEC can view the result. So with that, I don't think politicians should exercise fear. Where I have, you know, doubt is, you know, when it comes to these um, um, election um, matters in court, the moment INEC announces or declares a result, they would want to stand, you know, solidly behind that result, even though there were discrepancies in, in, the, in the outcome. That's where I have a challenge. That's why I, that's why I said, you know, yes and no. All right, thank you so, so much for your time. We've also shown as always, all right? Really appreciate it.